Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I feel kind of silly, though, because really, this is like Hillis's baby. Of course, I'm joined with Hillis. <laughs> and our mystery guest, not super mystery, because most of you guys know her, the lovely Jessica Jones, Cryptid Huntress. How are you guys doing today? I'm good. You know, it just kind of dawned on me that your name is reflective of the Marvel character who was a detective, Jessica Jones. Oh, yeah. I know they based they based a character off of me. I'm so I'm so honored. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know the Marvel characters, but I think I was I always think Jessica Jones that like that's dharmically like when you were born, you had no choice but to be a cryptid huntress with a name like Jessica Jones. Like you couldn't <laughs> just be like a teacher or like a nurse or you had to be like that kind of name. Like yeah. you had to be a cryptid huntress. <laughs> So I, so I know and i'm out here i'm out here fulfilling the prophecy right now <laughs> yes 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 and before before we get into it let me just go ahead you guys i'm gonna go ahead and show you so of course all of the links for jessica and hillis will be down oops we down in the description box below so here is hillis's channel now let's see if zoom will let me do this if i can just switch over to jessica's did it switch did it switch sometimes yes. okay cool here is jessica's yes. channel as you guys know so i will have all of their links down in the description box below if you are not subscribed to their channels go ahead and get subscribed and i guess we can take it away so typically we're kind of talking off camera how to flow with this um and i'm not introducing the hold on you guys sorry i got my facetime i had like two cameras looking at me i was like why is my face up anyway <laughs> I, I haven't introduced the title of this episode because as you guys know whenever we have jessica remote view we give her nothing but a target so she has no idea what was asked or what the subject is so that's why i haven't totally introduced what this episode is thus far but you will see it in the title uh before when you click on the video but I, if you're thinking that's <laughs> weird that's why so hillis i, I do we want to let jessica do you want to go first and just give us like yeah I, 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 I just want to want to preface this by saying though know, this is a real interesting topic and those have been following you know that is dear to me and this could possibly give validation to what we have been talking about thus far and so i i'm really excited to to really feel into to this energy being an intuitive i already feel the excitement bubbling over and and all the everything you know just everything so yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm awesome well i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put the camera on you jessica so you take it away with what you've got okay all right this is i'm like i'm, I'm all i've got my nerves are like racked right now because i'm like oh god i hope that my data lines up with what this target is <laughs> okay i hope so i have i have two separate targets and uh and i was given two sets of coordinates okay and uh and so all i was given were eight numbers for each target so the first target i all i got was eight eight six one seven zero zero one that's all i had and so uh through that you know i i go through a series i just want to explain to the audience in case anyone's wondering uh, I've, I've been trained for a long time in remote viewing coordinate remote viewing all different types of remote viewing uh, it's the same type of remote viewing our military does, okay, uh, the Ingo Swan methods. And um, so I, I have, um, I write charts, uh, I write down those numbers, and then all this information comes flooding in. 
And that's how I have all these pages of data. We call it data. Okay. So I'm going to go through my data with you guys. And, uh, and hopefully this lines up. We're going to go over target number one right now. Okay. So first of all, when I first get into the target, I start eating sensory data. And that's anything that I see, taste, touch, smell, anything, uh, anything that I feel. So I wrote down things like tan, tin, turbulent, micro blasted, lengthy, fibbing, fibbing, okay, finesse, dancing, and untruthful. Okay, those are some of the things I wrote down for my sensory data. Uh -huh. Now, in my analytic overlay, where there's a little, uh, there's like a box where I put things where this is stuff that where, where I'm trying to make sense of what I'm sensing. Okay. And, uh, and putting a, just, I've got a lot of interesting data here. So I wrote a uh, loveless lace, uh, microaggressions, tell, tell, tells, long lasting, covered up lies were told is what I heard. Claire audiently heard lies were told. Uh, I wrote classic romantic bills to pay. That's what I wrote. Got away. Salute. I heard damning. Something was damning. Damning information. I wrote down. Uh, lot. I wrote land lot. I was seeing a land lot. And I wrote actually like something that looked like it was kind of floating. Like a, a square piece of, like a plot of land. Like I was literally writing. I wrote a plot of land. So la I wrote lot, land lot, and plot. Okay, so a plot of land. And then underneath that I wrote vice. Okay, and then and I showed you my, my stage three sketch, which looks like a plot of land that was like floating or it was just there. Okay, so that was my first page. Those are my first three stages. Now, do you guys want to kind of go over that before I move on and let me know if I was on target? I um, don't even, I don't know what the hold on one second. Let me get, bring us all back. Hillis, I'm gonna leave this up to you. I think I'm like got yeah, goosebumps right now, absolute goosebumps, especially with your sketch. So yeah. and I kept looking at you, Hillis, when she was saying some stuff. So what do you want yeah. to do? do you want to, I don't even know. What, what was your first, should we ask what was the first question? What was the target, Hillis? So the first question, the target was uh, 8861701. I asked, was Moo the Garden of Eden? Oh. Moo. Now, oh, Moo is asked. like a, a, an island, right? It was a continent? Yes. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Okay, yeah. so that's okay. I I wrote a, a plot of land. Okay, and it was floating. Yeah. Not it's, it's probably an island, right? Was it an island? Yeah, but what got me was what sent me what really what really got me a bit emotional is the when you started going over your list of telltales, long lasting, covered up lies were told, and then untruthful. So that speaks to me that this was some acknowledgement of this, you know, that people were aware of this. Because if anyone who's watching now go back and watch part one and part two of the series that I've been doing with Christ, where we talk about Mu and how this was the land of the first civilization and how it established colonies and, and things. And, and so it traveled throughout the the world, you know? And so oh, wow. every and when you talk and when you, you you hit it when you said, you know, floating island, yeah. I mean <laughs> there's the maps. I just it, it literally was in like the specific, uh, Pacific Ocean. And Hillis yeah, go back and watch part one and part two because Hillis go, breaks down like from James Churchwood, who was the guy that really brought this to the Ward. forefront. Of course he would he Church Ward, yeah, sorry. So he was really ridiculed for for his um pursuant of this alternative history we'll say and in the book it talks about how the the, uh, the way you talk about the land because hillis correct me if i'm wrong but the island when you described it as floating it kind of was a, i felt like that's the way how yeah. we would describe it from our vocabulary because it, the land wasn't like solid was it it was kind of like mushy no, it was bit. swampy like swamp like and when you talked and when you mentioned on your sensory data where you talked about turbulent and micro and blasted <laughs> and lengthy and and fib all of that that spoke to the destruction to me mm -hmm. of it because it was just you know it was sitting on top of gas belts which created the turbulence and then eventually you know opened up the gas pipe to still volcanic eruptions 
So that spoke to me in that regard. I'm like, yeah, this. this <laughs> wow. Yeah. There's so, more data. We're not even done yet. That was just the first page. Yeah. So yeah, you were right on target, Jessica. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> And then, then when you talked about, I think at the very bottom, it was number three, damn up and then fire, you know, at the very bottom of the first page. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. right there. James well, word would be proud if he were still alive. <laughs> so, all right. Well, should, we keep, should we keep going yeah. with it? Yeah. Yeah, let's. Let's move on to stage four. So this is more sensory data and more analytic overlay here. Okay. And so on the next page, the first thing I wrote was stolen. And then I was picking up on thieves. I wrote air supply and landlocked. Okay. And then I was picking up on, okay, so this, I wrote down dog because I was seeing a cadaver dog. There were dead bodies. Okay. Death. I was picking up on cadaver and cadaver dogs. There was, there was death involved in this target. Um, I would also heard hired and I wrote and I wrote murder for hire on here. Okay. And then I started picking up on something that was very dense. I wrote thickness, rectangular square and vegetation. I was picking up on a lot of trees, like a forest. I was picking up on just like dense ve vegetation and I thought it looked like a park. So I wrote park and I wrote dense woods. Okay. So that was, that's my second page of data right there. How does that fit in with the target y'all? I mean, honestly, you're you're right on it. Only because the fact that this was a, a rich, lush vegetative land from how it, from how James Churchward described it. You know, it was paradise essentially. You know, in terms of how it really resonated, and and the part where you talk about uh, the tempted and forced, it speaks to the symbolism of the tree of knowledge in in the religious text or in james church what the uh oh geez why can't i think of it you know the the symbol of the tree where he talks about the serpent and the uh, well in this case the the symbology of the uh serpent being the dragon having the knowledge and the protector of the waters of the mother the creation of earth so when you when you talk about all of this it really brings that the the description of what he what he uh has and so but what kind of threw me off a little bit when you talked about dogs so i'm just trying to see where dog were playing too unless you know there was dogs back then and we didn't know <laughs> yeah. yeah it could be well I think I think it was um, sometimes it's very symbolic. Some of the stuff that's in the data, there could have been dogs back then. Absolutely. I mean, we look at maps of the old world. I do a lot of uh, research and study on the old world. OK, and remote viewing into things like that. And there's a lot of uh, creatures from back then. I mean, we, you know, we talk about dragons. OK, unicorns, yeah. bunnies, um, cyclops, all this, all these weird things that are on these maps, dog headed men. Uh, you know, I'm a, a field researcher. I go out, I actually go hunt, hunt dog men and stuff. Okay. So oh, I'm wow. out in the woods doing that to this day. Uh, but these things were on maps back in the old world. Okay. So there are all sorts of animals, all sorts of dogs and things. So could have been oh, for sure, wow. because there was life, there was life force on that island. If according to this data. No, there was a, an abundance of life, life force. The, now, when you were doing this, were you able to guesstimate about how much life, I mean, in terms of actual people, I mean, in I don't know. I didn't know what the target was, so I didn't hone in on anything. So I don't okay. know. I do, I do actually have some more data for this, too. I've got one, one more page that yeah. we can go over because uh, the, the, the third page of data is more sensory data, more analytic overlay, and it it really had something to do with, okay, so just to analyze that last page, uh, it seemed like there was something that was forced, something that was forced. Uh, there were people that were struggling, they were fighting, they were upset, but there was one, it seems as though there was one person in charge that uh, got tempted potentially, uh, but it, I, I, got, I wrote down lights out, okay, dark, black, uh, something that was laced. I mean, I was almost picking up on something that they got poisoned. Okay, so they got poisoned. Uh, I was picking up on a, a man. I wrote daytime or Dayton. I wrote Dayton. I don't know if that has any significance. I wrote forced, struggling, fighting, upset. I wrote 
El Jefe Boss Daddy. Like I was getting this like Boss Daddy energy. Oh, yeah. so, boss. El Jefe. Okay. Well, no, that, could, that could speak to the Emperor or the High Priest at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think... Well, what with the whole dog thing in my head, I saw this symbology as like dog is man's best friend. So there was a lot of trust within Mew. And when you said the murder for hire, that triggered a lot of my knowledge of the law of one. What the law of one talks about that you have these dark entities when you have a planet that's going through like evolution into another density, then these dark entities will come in to intentionally kind of tempt certain people to trigger. A catastrophe to happen and so that's kind of what i when you said that i was like okay so yeah this was like a strategic in this bad you know because the law of one like in our planet specifically earth you know all third density plants but very specifically with earth we are food for the four D negatives and so they come in to try to manipulate to keep us in this like contained so if people are getting too free and too too open in their consciousness they'll come in and try to cause like i mean look what we're going through in our world right now right like right. so that's kind of when i heard them i thought okay that's like symbolism of and that the dog thing man's best friend they had all these other because in, in mew from what i understand they were not kind they were not as cut off from the cosmos as we are so maybe no. they had a lot of trust and that trust trust was betrayed by a manip manipulation that worked with the changing of the poles that caused the cataclysm and with the cadavers mm -hmm. Um, I'll say like this word maybe one time. So this at, at, after the fall of Mew, this triggered cannibalism. Yeah, and so which which you know I'll just say that say that part for another day because I, I there's something interesting more about that, but we have to talk about that for another day. But uh, the what what struck me when you when you said lights out and people were being poisoned, what that spoke to me is you know when you have the the volcanic gas belts in so close to the surface all the the toxins coming up out of the earth you know they're being poisoned slowly that way and then there could have been you know the emperor or the high priestess could have created a poison to help ease the transition of the people as as the climate or as the island the continent was being submerged because people were, I mean, obviously some survived who had left the island, but the uh, people on the island, it was, it was lights out. It was lights out. Yeah, for them. Lights out. Were, <laughs> and then tan, did you pick up on the tan when you said the word tan, T-A-N, tan? Yeah. When you said that, so this is why this also triggers a lot of people, which it doesn't matter. Like we're all human beings, it, but this is what's interesting. So the, the, should we, the race, so the, the, we all have been taught that humanity started in Africa, right? But Mew says no, that humanity started in the specific, uh, Pacific Ocean, and it was like white people who were like all of colored skin, like almost to Hillis's, even though yeah. Hillis is a mix, it's almost his color skin as I see dark hair, dark eyes. And so, but it was more uh, cat categorized as like a white race that then all the other races were born out of that particular. So when you said tan, that's kind of, because it just yeah. sounds like <laughs> in our world today, everybody's got different color hair, different color eyes, different shades of skin. But there it seemed like everybody kind of had the same skin tone, same hair, same eye. Does that make sense? Does that? Yeah, no, that, may, that makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, that's why I can't wait to, to we, for us to get into the book because it was like fascinating. And how they talk about the the different colorations and where they came from and how advanced they became not just there but on the uh colonies that they established so i was i i'm i'm, I'm this is this is you know validation for for the work that the james did and for everything that i've read and everything that i felt up until this moment so so this is amazing i can't wait to, to get into the next target <laughs> why don't we I'll, I'll put it back on you jessica and if you want to go wherever you want to go next you go next girl okay well that's interesting because that you guys are bringing up the skin tones and the hair color because that was a focus of the second target for some reason and so i was like this is weird because i don't usually i actually found myself stopping kind of in the middle of this target going why am i so focused on the skin tone <laughs> whatever this is Okay, so I don't know what this target is. Okay, I still don't know what this is. Uh, but uh, but 
so I was given a, another set of numbers. This is my second set of numbers. I did this target a couple of days later uh, from the first target. And uh, and all I was given was 88616001. Okay, uh, that was my that was my number, my, my coordinates. And so uh, we'll go back through this again because I got my sensory data and then we went to the analytic overlay. All right, so uh, for some of my sensory data, I wrote moving. I was seeing something that had holes in it. Okay, holes, holy, I wrote holy as well. Uh, surprise, I wrote blasted, swift, quick. I was getting a lot of quick movement, quick movement. Uh, I wrote kicking. I was seeing a lot of white colors, like white clothing and stuff. I was seeing white clothing and I actually drew a picture of what, I kept seeing men in like white long shirts that were like dress, something you'd see in the Middle East kind of like long dress shirts and stuff. And so I wrote white wind i heard a lot of talking and calling talking and calling a lot of a lot of um language and voices and stuff okay so i um so for some of my analytic overlay i wrote posterior <laughs> posterior i wrote posterior movements which is weird okay so anyways posterior I wrote movements uh i think i wrote lace this is weird because i wrote lace in this target and i wrote lace in that target and then I wrote laced at the end. So this is what I just now realized that I've written laced three times in two of these targets. So lace or laced has some significance. Um, I wrote plane and plane, like plane, like an airplane or a, a plane, like a, a plane of existence. And I wrote plane, P-L-A-I-N and P-L-A-N-E. So two planes. And then I wrote plane Jane. Okay. Uh, I wrote grievance. This is where I started seeing a man who had a beard, like darker colored hair. He had facial hair, a white shirt, and I wrote long shirt, like I described. Uh, I, I heard winning. I wrote down wingman. On board. I wrote on board. Uh, I heard loud talking, and uh, I, I heard a setup. There was a setup happening, or something was set up. And then I, I wrote coat, because I kept seeing that long white coat, <laughs> like shirt. And, uh, and I heard coach. So I wrote coach down and then I wrote a picture of my sketch looks like a, a, a person wearing that coat. Y'all, I don't know why I was so focused on that, but, uh, but that was my first three stages. So do y'all want to kind of go over it and let me know if I was anywhere near to being on target? Yeah, it, it speaks a lot to what, where this could be. And so the question was, where is mood now? Oh, and okay. Yeah, and so when you when you said it, it looks to me that there's a bunch of researchers still looking for this, and potentially in a colder climate, mm -hmm. because you know after after it broke apart because Mu, from what I read, and it could have been more pieces, but Mu broke off into three pieces which is why there you probably saw all the holes and everything else in, in that regard. And so when, when from what I remember reading and from what I saw, some of the things that I heard is that once it slips, you know, cause it was on, it was on the gas, which means it was near tectonic plates. It shifted and moved down South. So the remnants of it could be in, the south near the south pole and all the in, in that region so that's you know with all and, and just going over your your notes again where you talked about uh moving holes surprise blasted with you know them trying to dig and, and find this place a lot of movement when talking to me, these this sounds like researchers, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, like uh, people who uh, or or what's the word? I can't think of the term right now, but you know, researchers on the on the uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Expedition to uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, expedition. Well, this talking and almost and I, J Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong. The way you described it in my mind, it was almost like whispering. Like did you say, did you even say whispering? Like. No, I was hearing talking and, and calling. I was hearing uh, conversations back and forth. Did so I was, hear, I was hearing a lot of conversations. Yeah, because what, what comes to my mind when you say that is walkie-talkie. Like there was mm -hmm. static and the energy in that. So I still feel the people are still looking for this space. 
and they know where it is. And to me, it sounds like it's in that article near the South Pole, at least some remnants, some pieces of, of Mu, which is you know, now you know, Garden of Eden or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, well, and the way it, the energy kind of felt almost like a group, it's almost like secretive in a way, because we know that if there is a group of people looking for this, they would have to kind of keep their head down a little bit because the powers yeah. that be, as we say on my channel, the Aluma Shmati, because we can't say the word, would would probably have them shmurdered if they um if they were to be very open about what they were doing. And do you think then that a, a lot of the Aluma Shmati are using some of the technology from you down in Antarctica then? That's why they all go down there because maybe they have some of the advanced equipment that was like left over? Well, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna confirm one of the things you just talked about, which is their advanced technology. We haven't talked about it yet. Um and I, and I can't wait to get into this in the next episode. They do have they had a flying machine that required no fuel that could fly at least three thousand miles, if not more. And this was during a war time. Wow. And that's in this book. So if you guys want to know more about it, pick up this book. Children of Mew. Yeah. I keep thinking about Maria or or is that or sick? Was that I've covered her a long time ago. The the one the woman from the not the sh the Yahtzees will say the Yahtzees. We have to be so careful, especially getting close to the competition that's happening in November. YouTube gets real weird when it comes to that. So we'll say the Yahtzees. They had a, a Maria Orsic who they sent down to Antarctica who was doing a anyway. I'll link that down below, guys. But and, you know, because there's been that that legend, that folklore legend. I don't. I think it's more than a legend. I think you know, but we'll say legend. It's true. Yeah, it's a true legend of of them having stuff in Antarctica that's hidden from the rest of us. So, um, you know, and now it makes sense if it's actually was ours to begin with, but they they hid it, make dumbing us down. You know. So, all right, we want to keep going. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I got, got another page. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's let's get let's. Let's keep it going then, okay? Because I was actually picking up on, a, I, I was so tuned into that coat that guy was wearing for whatever reason. I wrote the lab coat and I heard lab rat, lab rat. Uh, I was also like, feel like I was in some kind of like a clean environment, like an office or a laboratory of some sort. Uh, and I was, I was seeing someone who had, uh, was, had brown skin, dark skin, dark hair. And, uh, and I wrote leading, it was a leader. And this person's a leader. Uh, and I actually wrote cult leader underneath leader. So I had leader, cult leader, who's on a mission to destroy. Okay, because I wrote destroyer. And then I heard, this is the last thing I heard for this target, lift up to destroy. And that was it. That was the end of the data right there. Well, that could be taken one of two ways, honestly, because when you have information or knowledge that has been submerged that could be harmful to one and benefit the other, you know, lift up to destroy to destroy what? You know, what's going on or you know, it, it could be it could be taken one or two ways, but as I feel this that you know, as I feel into this, it's, you know, more a bit on the nefarious side when I feel into that. You know, and, and me, I'm always optimistic. You know, I'm always being, oh, yeah, that could be a good thing. That could be. As I feel it, it's like, no, that, no, it's more for nefarious. And so this speaks to everything that James talked about, especially in the third book, The Children of Mu, where he talked about technology and how advanced they were. And so this could be very well in that space where people are seeking this knowledge and and actually what it, I feel that it's here already and being used is what I feel. What do you think, Jessica? Oh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of this technology, listen, our technology, and I, I talk about this a lot on my channel and uh, just in general in our research that we do out in the field. Uh, the technology that we're shown today is nothing compared to what they've got. Okay, uh, the things that we we have access to is light years behind what we're seeing right now. Even like with UFOs and stuff, I, I believe, and I, I've talked with people that work at Skunk Works and Lockheed and stuff. I think a lot of these UFOs are actually uh, ours. They're human. 
UFOs and stuff. It's not like extraterrestrials and things like you, you'd imagine, the things that we're seeing today, uh, because their technology is way farther advanced than we could ever imagine uh, yeah. that, that we're using, that humans have access to, but just not us little people. <laughs> Our, us, us peasants. I have. I want to ask a question, and I, because the minute you started, because I got the same thing you said, Hillis, that this is a nefarious group that's trying to, like, raise this technology and, like, steal it or... T- and you start just describe the head guy and saying cult leader. Now, if I have any new people watching this channel, and if you're sensitive to stuff, this might not be the channel for you because we're just trying to find the truth here. So when I when you're giving a description, when you, were you talking about a black man when you gave dark skin, dark eyes? Could it possibly be our our buddy? I'll just say his first name because I don't want to trigger the algorithms. Our buddy Barack. I, you know, I don't know. It could be. I mean, I was seeing what looked to be Middle Eastern. Okay. Middle Eastern okay. Was interpreting. So it, that's what I was that's what I was looking at. And it could be. It could it could be anybody. Well, well no, it could be anybody, but this yeah. this goes back to the home, the now home of the inspired writings of Mu, which is in uh Tibet, which is okay. in that part of the world. And so this information very well, you know, you know, just you know, expanding this a little bit is very well be in their library uh, of tablets and of parchment and all this information. So this technology may not be an actual physical piece of uh, technology, but it could actually be instructions on some technology that we may not have access to yet. Because you know, one of the things that and and I. And I was just talking about this this morning to myself that I should be practicing this, and I haven't been because the last show that you and I did, Vice, was when it, you know, talking about, you know, certain um, uh, practices, you know, uh, of the energy work that I do, you know, being a medium and being you know, a Reiki teacher, master, and the Lamar and Light Energy, all these things that I do. And one of the, the things that I was shown was, you know, techniques is to begin to reverse the magnetic field of the heart and of the body. And so when I think of that, I think of, you know, the, some of the things that Buddha and Yeshua uh, might have learned in their time in studying these tablets, these parchments in the, in the sacred school. So when you speak of someone who's of Middle Eastern descent, these can very well be some of the keepers of that information. And of course, one of them, you know, as he talked, as it was written on, on one of your 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 notes, was that someone was tempted. And so, when you're tempted with this much power, then yeah, you know. And and honestly, I'm going to say it could have been me in the past life because I know that I was an emperor. And a few uh, about a month ago, I had this vision of one of the reasons why I haven't tapped fully into my abilities is this place of fear. Is that I've done something that I shouldn't have done in one of my lives. And so, you know, it could be a real, but it could be. Now you got course correcting, buddy. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We're all course correcting. We're all, well, the rate too, you know, so Jessica, when you, with, it sounds like you're talking about two different groups. Like there's people trying to find it and other people trying to find it. And they're kind does that make sense? Like they're one good group, one more nefarious group. And I, I don't know. That's just kind of how I see it in my mind. But we also know the reason why I brought up our friend Barack, we'll say, um, is because another friend of ours named George Schmoros, we'll say, um, he recently um, left the earth. Um, left. And so there's this debate. And we know that George Schmoros, he was a Yahtzee and like sat up high at the pinnacle of this Aluma Shmati. And um, bless somebody's heart if they're new to, to, to this world. Like, bless your heart, as we say in the South. Like, we, if you don't believe there's a shadow establishment out there, just look at all the pretend words we have to say on YouTube. Um, but we know once he left his seat in the Aluma Shamati, somebody else had to take that position. And from a lot of whistleblowers, we know that was our buddy Barack. So that's why I, so I'm, because, you know, George Schmoros, he had all this Yahtzee money that he was able, I don't know. It's just, it makes me so, it's almost like, you know, Hillis, I, I, it, it makes me, and Jessica, we've, we've talked about the possibility of like Egypt actually being here in the United States. Um, but that's not a possibility anymore. Well, so. 
Oh, so well, I, I just say because of all the pyramids that we have way more pyramids here. We have all these like missing. All basically, what well, I'm that, saying that, that may be true. I mean, honestly, I, I that I'm not I'm not uh, discounting or debating any of the physical evidence. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the simple fact that yes, this could have been a, a second Egypt. Yes but not the original, only because of what I've read thus far yeah. and how the colonies have settled and how Thoth and Osiris and how they connected and, and built everything. Egypt is Egypt. I mean, and, and, I, and, I've, and I've heard other people say, uh, and maybe, maybe even Billy Carson, they say, yeah, Egypt was in America. I'm like, no. And, and, that, and that's, honestly, that's what I feel. And, and, that's that because you know i think what they're doing those are taking artifacts and they're confusing people by dropping artifacts in different areas and rewriting yeah. the history and re um you know we've talked about this a lot with america's too like in, in, in some of my videos on gnostic i go into like the moon eyed people which we were always taught as Americans that there were only Native Americans here, meaning there were only like Asian descendant people here, but that's not true. There were black people here. There were white people already here when the settlers came in. The Cherokee were very clear about that, that they were all in this history book from the late 1800s I have here. It talks about that, about how there were people of all races that were Native Americans. And so we see how they do these things to cause division. Um, and anyway, so shall we continue, Jessica? Yeah, well, I'm done with my, my data. The data's done. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. Oh. So that's, that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh. So, but, what? But I just wanted to go back to what you said, said just now about the artifacts. And so, when you have the people of Mu, and when they left Mu, remember that they were called Mayans. People who left Mu were called Mayans. It didn't matter if they went to South America, it didn't matter if they went to India, Africa or North America, didn't matter where they went, they were all mines. And so when you have people, of course they're going to take artifacts with them, and then they're going to be deposited at whatever colonies that they have. And so, you know, people, you, you know, you have this one group that went to what is now Chile, Peru, the Yucatan, you know, they, in the Amazon, they have their set of, of uh, of artifacts and you have people who go up to India, they have their set. And then of course, you know, when people are doing their, uh, uh, what's the word, when they dig, they out, when they do archeological digging, they see similarities in these artifacts. Well, duh, because they came from one source, you know? So, I mean, that's just how it is. And I thought, but that's because this was, freaking amazing this gave a lot of confirmation to what was and what's happening now so i'm, I'm glad, glad. That's just, wild. you were familiar with mew right because you weren't shocked when we said mew so how, what do you what did you know about because i never heard of mew until hillis sent me the information so what what have you heard about mew i'm just curious I, yeah i don't know a whole lot about mew at all but uh you know i've done some remote viewing targets for my friend barry barry littleton is one of my one of my sidekicks and uh he's he tasked me with a lot of targets we do shows on thursday nights pretty often together uh with my remote viewing stuff and he had given me some like phantom islands we i think we talked about mew a little bit uh he had he had tasked me with high brazil if you guys are familiar with that it's a phantom island that shows up every like seven years or something and the data that I got from that was it had a lot of inner earth connections. Okay. A lot of inner earth. Like it's almost like it has been regenerated some kind of ship or something. It's some kind of living organism vessel that comes up uh, to the surface every seven years or so to get sunlight. Okay. To power up with the sun, I think. Okay. okay so, so how many more years until that happens again? I want to go see and feel and go, oh no. <laughs> so, yeah. Look, I Brazil. <laughs> I've done a series a couple of years ago. I did a series on Phantom Islands. I didn't cover this Phantom Island, but there are so many islands in the Is Caribbean it? that um, that they say the, the, that that they you know we we look at maps from like the 1600s and there are all these islands with like cities and markers that just do not exist anymore. And they're trying to be like, oh no, it was a mistake. You know, those explorers back then, LOL, they didn't have the right technology. I'm like, they did pretty good. You know, they, they did pretty good without, you know, like gotta give them some credit. 
And um, that's I interesting. I want to find out whether there's a charter or a boat. Who's with me? There's a charter or a boat? Can I tell you guys something really funny? Um, my boyfriend is a descendant of a pirate by the name of Peter Knight. And he didn't believe me for a long time because Peter Knight was like a privateer. And I was like, dude, that's a pirate. And he just today decided to do research into Peter Knight, his just his, his ancestor. And he came back. He was like, okay, so you were right. He was totally a pirate. <laughs> so so we can be the pirate. pirates, you guys. We can be the new pirates. <laughs> oh, my God. Todd's a pirate. I love that. That's so cool. It fits him, actually. I love it. He's an explorer for sure. That's what yeah, that I, I laugh because he doesn't do well with motion sickness. So I'm like, you did not get that from Peter and I. <laughs> Dude was like on a boat. You you throw up in boats. So, <laughs> so but, yeah. But so hi, Brazil. It looks like it was it outside the UK. Looking at these. It, it pops up in different places. Yeah, it is outside the UK. I don't think it's like all, a whole bunch of different places. It's, it's near the, off the off the coast of the UK. Yes. That's what it is. I think it's kind of north of it. Probably near like the Canary Islands then, huh? Yes. Oh, it's like yeah. right outside yeah. of Ireland. And the yes. Ireland would be like down, if you guys can see my marker, would be like off of Spain or close to Africa. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I did a whole deep dive into Agartha as well. That's the or, uh, Mar Maria um, Orsic episode I did. I'll put that down. And I talked a lot about some of the, because Agartha is like the underground world. And also, you guys, like uh, the Cassiopeians speak a lot about the undergrounders. And that's apparently why Australia gets hit a lot with um, a lot of the Aluma Shmati nonsense is because uh, Australia is a is like a um, treasure trove for the undergrounders to come up a lot in Australia. Yeah. So but they're the aboriginals and then that is also the third chakra of the planet too. So that's where the power center is as well. So you have that, but then also thinking too, thinking about what uh, Billy Graham, no, is it Billy Graham? Billy Carson? Yeah. Or Billy Graham, the preacher. I, I, I'm getting all the names mixed up. No, but the, Graham, the guy that did the stuff about ancient uh, history, about a little bit. Uh, Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. Yes, thank you. See, I'm getting names mixed up. <laughs> See, this is when Graham Hancock, he talked about uh, when the, he calls them civilizations, but I'm going to say colonies because this is what they were. These were the colonies of moon after the destruction of Mood, when they started to create these underground homes. And so they probably dug a little bit too deep in some places <laughs> um, to, to survive the, the dry ass, to survive the flooding. And so this is where they were. You know, they call them ant people and, and all these other the cultures. Yeah. I, think that, see, I think that's what it was. Yeah, go ahead. So they, so my boy, because my boyfriend follows Cassiopeians like crazy, and they, and that, that what she said just rung a bell. So the reason why a lot of them find their solace in underground, so our lifespan is what, like a hundred years maybe? Their yeah. lifespan is like a thousand years. And so they believe that Earth, uh, Earth's conditions are so temperamental that they have to go underground most of the time. And you think about that, if you're living in a thousand year span, and I think our history and the Cassiopeians, they've added years i believe to our history timeline i think things happen to you know the cassiopeians have kind of said that as well and so you think about all the cataclysms and all the different civilizations that for us seem like was a long ass time ago but for them would have been like their grandpa's time you know like we're yeah. still like we still i mean for a lot of us like we heard stories of our grandparents surviving the great depression and that really affected us a, a, a couple so for them that would be like their grandfather going through you know so that makes a lot of sense matching what you're saying to what the cassiopeians say about the undergrounders the uh, uh, garthians whatever you want to call them yeah because uh, part of the work that i do is connected to that space you know connected to that connected to shambhala connected to the inner earth energy and and it, you know what's even more fascinating? You, you know, with movies, they typically portray things in in the real world at some point or another. You guys haven't seen it yet. Uh, Godzilla and King Kong: New Empire. Now, if you guys know the story, they talk about you know King Kong and how his home is in the Earth and how they have to go to Antarctica to go to the portal. Yeah. When you go to the portal, they switch gravity to uh for him to to drop and all that other stuff however 
in the new one, they go to, it's the, I forget the name of the, of the tribe, but you know, in the first one, you know, the young girl in the first King Kong movie, she has a relationship with King Kong, and she's, quote unquote, the last of her tribe, okay? But in the new one, after they go back home to face the new threat, et cetera, et cetera, there is what I will call a crystal city to where there's a pyramid in the in their um in in their like courtyard, like their main temple space below, and then there's a crystal pyramid above. So you have two crystal pyramids, one above, one below. And, you know, at the end of the movie they have to do something for them to meet and cause, you know, something to keep the world safe. I'm not gonna get into all of that, but it's probably that interesting. You know, you have, like, yeah, this they like to tell us the truth, don't they? Yeah, you have this energetic area that protects this city, but you can only cross it for, you know, whatever reason, and then you cross it and you get to see the pyramids. So I'm like, hmm. I will, I will tell you guys, I know I've said this before, if you really want to see, like, the truth, watch American Horror Story. They I'm get... So tired of that. No, I'm kidding. You're t- uh, the apocalypse season eight it's everything that we're living i mean it's it's wild like how much but um and then what we got a new movie coming out have you guys seen the new movie coming out fly me to the moon no oh yeah it's about that- yeah it's about it's them uh, 11 right? shmaking, they're making the schmoon landing it's about how they did it basically oh i've i've i'm not no i'm not interested yeah. in seeing but I thought no, was- you know, you know that I I did remote view that a while back, and there's there's a a, a kind of a, a rule, you know, but that remote viewers have been taught. I I was told myself don't remote view the moon, especially don't talk about it publicly, <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I and I I just I was pushing the envelope just 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 good enough to where I decided I got I got. I, I was like, oh, I I had remote viewed. I was given the target of the Apollo Eleven moon landing, and I was going to do a show on it. And about two hours before that show was set to air live, I got a proverbial knock at my door. Okay. And, uh, and you know, I can talk about all these cryptid attacks, dogman attacks, Bigfoot kidnappings, all this stuff. But God forbid I talk about the Apollo 11 moon landing. So uh, wow. I went on with my show, but I had to change up my content a little bit. I had to wow. leave a lot of stuff out. Yeah. Because wow. for whatever reason, it's a very touchy subject. They, so that's like the red talk, button. They're like, don't touch the red button. <laughs> uh, but honestly, we're going totally back. real. We've absolutely been to the moon. Ab- exactly what NASA totally. tells us is true. But, but <laughs> no, but I want to go back, Jessica, because I want to know. I know you talk about your sensory data in all of this, mm-hmm. and so do you care to? I want to know what what you. Felt. I mean, I know you have it on paper, but I want, want to hear from you, like, what emotions did it bring up for you when you was in this space of remote viewing of these targets? Yeah, well, I actually have a little place where I write down how I'm feeling and stuff, and I was I was just feeling, when the, let, me get, let me go by the two different targets. So the first target, I was feeling like there, I was being lied to about something. Okay, there's a lot of, I wrote fibbing down. Okay, I wrote fibbing and I wrote lying and set up and things like that and damning information. So I just, you know, I, I have to keep my emotions out of it for the most part because I'm just observing. Uh, okay, I understand. Okay. But when I do, when I do have some sort of like emotional impact is what we call it. That's that and, and any kind of if, if I'm feeling something, I write it down. Okay, and I just but but for this whole thing, I was just feeling as though I was being lied to. There was a lot of gossip. There were people throughout both of these targets. There was somebody in charge that was being deceptive and uh, and tempted and did something out of deception and greed, basically. I mean, that's that's what I was picking up on. I wasn't, I I try to keep my emotions out of it as much as I can because I'm just observing. However, yeah. uh, yeah. So that that answers it, hopefully. (laughs) You know, it does because, you know, and, and I'm just speaking from, you know, from one meeting to another, essentially. Mm-hmm. But when you're in these spaces, you do have to be more of an observer as opposed to, you know. And I guess, I guess what I was trying to get to, like, I know you was remote viewing this, but I, I don't know if you picked up on, like, any sensations from those who you are observing, which you probably were not able to, because he was just observing. Yeah. 
observing. Well, I, I, I can do something called a deep mind probe. And I did not do that in these targets. Uh, I, I didn't, I did pick up on a person and I, I could have done that. Okay. Uh, but I, but I chose not to because there was a lot, it seemed kind of dark and I kept writing dark down. It was dark, dark energy uh, was yeah. involved in uh, this person. To me, it seemed like they were dark because they were being deceptive and, and just the destroyer. Okay. So I wasn't really trying to get in that person's head. Um, now when I get like a high priority target, I do a lot. I've done a lot of missing persons cases, cold cases where people have been murdered. Okay. <laughs> Things like that. So, uh, when I'm, when I, and, and I, these are all blind targets, but when I'm given a high priority target by the head of my team, I, I can assume, especially when I, I, with the, when the data starts flood, flooding in, if it looks like there's someone that's in distress, dead or alive, uh, I can get in their head and talk with them. Okay. And, uh, and that's something where I can, I can ask them what their emotions are. Where are they? How are you feeling? Who did this to you? Uh, that kind of stuff. And I've actually located some was able to kind of pinpoint where these bodies were and stuff by talking to the people who had been schmurdered. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love our, I'm not like laughing that. at the fact that people lost their lives. No, I'm just like, no, right. all of this yeah, is the, the done and we're still saying yeah. the fake words because I know, right? Yeah. In public no, the, <laughs> yeah. This is real, this is real interesting. And, and I mean, honestly, this gave a lot of validation to the stuff that I've been reading. So it's, so, I mean, if you ever want to pick up the, especially the first book in James Earl Ward series is, uh, the symbols of Moo, you probably will feel a lot of, of energy from that and, and, and how it correlates to what you did today. I mean, it's just fascinating and how the, the validity on it. So I uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Now I have to read the book now. I have to, I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you I'm guys. gonna start doing deep dives on Mew now from here on out. You know, I actually I remember where I saw Mew recently because uh, I did a show on uh, creatures of ancient maps, and we talked about Monty's Planisphere of 1587, and that's a, a gigantic world map. And the two guests that I had on with me, they were we we kind of discussed how that could have been a flat Earth kind of map. Now I don't, I never. If you want to start a really good argument online, talk about flat Earth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the worst arguments I've ever seen with people are just flat Earth theorists and the people who believe it's a globe. I mean, and yeah, I, like I they, never they give they my can, opinion. Yeah, they yeah. are truly convinced that the Earth is, Earth is flat. I'm like, if you're yes. convinced that the Earth is flat, then I am a white man with blue eyes. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I've always believed the earth is a globe. Okay, that's my opinion. Uh, but I, yes. you know, I'm always, I'm, okay, Bryce, there's a map right there that you're scrolling down, the blue, the bright blue map with the green. Okay, that's, that's one of the flat earth maps, this one, yeah. yes. And that is, they actually, I believe Mew might be on that uh, because some, some flat earthers say that there's an ice wall. And, and I've discussed this before, just to, out of discussion. Okay, could there be an ice wall and then there's lands beyond the ice wall? And Mew, actually, in one of those, either that map or the one, there's one below it that's like turquoise and blue. I think it might be one of those. But I believe Mew is on one of those maps. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's interesting. Uh, outside the ice wall. You know, people have, people have asked the, the Capitolians. Winter is coming. I know. Winter is coming, right? Game of Thrones. Yeah. The people have asked the Cassiopeians about the Earth, and the Cassiopeians basically they just respond like, "Look in the sky and look at the other planets. What do you see? Round. So, what does that tell you about?" And I always say, like, for me, I definitely don't think what they've told us is real, but I don't think it's the it's somewhere in between. Like, with there's some <laughs> somewhere in between. I think we got land we don't know about. You know, and at yeah. this point, like there is way too much to be concerned about in my daily life to know what I'm actually standing on. I'm going to be standing on it regardless. So, so exactly, I kind exactly. of feel like that takes exactly. people to like the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac, where like <laughs> at this point, that's not a concern. We just got it because you're being distracted from the real shit show happening over here. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like, it doesn't. You know, it's I know the Cassiopeians do say that we have like a firmament because of we are we are quarantined basically because we're really bad on this planet. Um, so but but that that's but that's the only like flat earther thing. They say there is kind of a firmament, but you're not totally you're not flat, you know. So um, and I think, too, sometimes people get this idea. And I think this comes from religion that we are kind of the nucleus of the, the universe. 
And I think when you start to explore the idea that we're not alone in the universe, that we're just another living being, like there's, a, we're not, we're not, we, Earth's got to stop being so narcissistic. Like it's not about <laughs> us, right? Like, Ego egocentric. Yeah, egocentric would be, be the word I think. And yeah, it's like we're the center of the universe, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's well, kind Jessica, of, yeah. No, well, Jessica, I was going to say, I would love to come on your show and talk about this more with you also. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot there's not a lot of people talking about who and the first civilization and really how we got started here. So I mean, why not? You got an <laughs> open invite, Hillis, anytime. Yeah, and you too, Bryce. Y'all can come on anytime. Well, I was just looking yeah. at some of the other blue maps to see if I, I could find the Mew thing. And, you know, it's interesting too, just I will remind our audience because I talk about this a lot. You know, we all studied the Trojan War and the Trojan horse. Um, in school for a reason. And sometimes uh, in the disclosure, I like how you call it the disclosure world, Jessica, or the whatever, truth or world, whatever you want to call it. Um, they will throw in, the Aluma Shmati will throw in like a Trojan horse. And so yeah. if there is nothing beyond the ice wall, if we are, then that could be, it's just, I just think that's a good point to bring up to make everybody always question everything, like really question everything. And, and, and know that, that, you know, third density, we're not in the density of knowing third density is the density of choice. Um, and so and so we we have to make choices about ourselves and how we, you know, I get I get so much flack, you guys like, you're when you're on YouTube, you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't, you know, and I still do deep dives into historical stuff and, and people get upset because I've also talked about Tartaria. I'm like, two things can be true, first of all. And second of all, if we are excluding, if we cling to one set of information and exclude the possibility of anything else, then we've closed our mind. And the mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's opened. So, um, so yeah, you guys, actually, I have some ideas for more, some more shows with you, Jessica. So, <laughs> Speaking of the historic stuff. So um, anyway, well, you guys, once again, I'm going to be putting all of Hillis's and Jessica's links down in the description box below. Now, I saw when I had you on the camera, Jessica, I noticed your necklace. Is that one of your necklaces? Yeah, well, I don't have it for sale in my shop. I wear this one every day. It's my Isis. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me, you guys, I will put Jessica's jewelry. She has Phyllis. She, I, I just called you Phyllis. Did yeah. I just kind of like your feminine side? Past, past, past life. life. I don't know. Past life. Past it, it was, life. It was more so because of ISIS, you know, and how, <laughs> how you know, that energy and Osiris and Hor and the, you know, don't even. Yeah. Another <laughs> show, but I will say, Hillis, if you okay. read Jessica's website, she does unbelievable jewelry, unbelievable stuff. And so I'm going to put that down below as well, guys, so that you can look at Jessica's stuff. It's fabulous. Um, and I've seen I've seen in that necklace in person on you. So and it is absolutely the attention to detail. Um, so for those of you who are conspiracy theorists who think we're all like fake people, Jessica and actually, I actually have hung out with each other. So <laughs> yeah. we, we, went we actually went big footing together with my kid and your boyfriend was there and your dog. And we went, oh. you came to the Georgia Bigfoot conference. Yep. Uh, yeah. to hang out. You were my amazing. Ass, my ass was so it. sore after that hike. We went off trail <laughs> and that, those hills were so damn steep. And my ass was so sore the next day. <laughs> oh yeah, my son, my son, my son passed out on the on the hike back. Remember, he laid on the ground and he found an arrow, and he acted like the arrow was under his arm, like it had gone through his chest. It was funny. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. That was so fun. fun. Like yeah. said, we got to get Shanti to America. We got to send Shanti bigfooting with you and film it because I would love to see her. <laughs> Oh, so we're doing Appalachia it. filming, like trying to, she'd be trying oh to keep the Bigfoot. So, so, all right, you guys. And I know you do every Thursday night, right? You do a live show, Jessica. Yeah, well, I do live show. I have four live shows a week. So oh, I wow. have uh, Wednesday, I have Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. I have Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's my remote viewing show. Saturday nights, I do on the hunt on my channel at 10 p.m. Eastern. And then Sunday nights, I'm at Spaced Out Radio at 10 p.m. So I do a live show there as well on youtube Girl, so y'all can see me I'll yeah stop radio down below as well so you guys because it is absolutely fascinating to see what jessica talks about and the um stuff that she can tell you about about things that go bump in the night so oh, yeah. yeah so oh, yeah I'm a, I'm a field researcher so i'm out in the woods all the time and uh, I'm, I'm on a, a 
been investigating with another team out of Tennessee. We just went to Alabama and did a dog man hunt a couple of weeks ago and uh, just backpacked. We hiked all the way in. Girl, I, I was nowhere near a car. If we, we had something go down, we weren't getting out of there that night. We were going to have to hunker down. So it was fun. This is what I live for. <laughs> Girl. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I was actually bragging about you offline to some students. I was like, I have this friend who does all of this stuff and she's with a bunch of men and she's like the most beautiful feminine girl. But she oh like does this stuff. I was like, she is, she is like the epitome of the strong female. I was like, she's with all these men and she's like toughing it out. And I was like, anyway, I was talking about you to some people offline. So anyway, but you guys, well, you. Uh, once again, I will put everybody's links down in the description box below. Please make sure you check out Hillis. Hillis, are you doing your live shows again with your co-host or? We haven't started up yet, but we've been talking about it uh, off and on. And so when the energetic timing is right, it'll be right again. And I'm excited. So, you know. so just make sure you're subscribed, guys, so you get that notification um, when he decides to go back and do his, his live shows as well. I hardly do any live shows because, honestly, my ADHD cannot handle it. I get so distracted by the comments that I just stop talking. You know? <laughs> so I just start reading the comments, forgetting I'm actually on the show. So anyway, you guys. I thank you guys all for watching this. I would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions. I'm sure we all would down in the comment section below. That's part of the reason why I started this channel is so that we could have conversations about these illicit topics that get me shadow banned a lot. But nonetheless, here we are. Um, and just be careful with the words you use, guys, because of the algorithms and the way that the uh, Aluma Shmati uh, monitors us, especially leading up to this like competition, we'll say, because we can't say the E word to the competition that's coming up. So anyway, you guys, lots of love to everyone. Everybody, um, be careful for those Bigfoots, right? If you see a book, <laughs> no, you didn't. If you hear a Bigfoot, no, you didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, everybody.